going live. It should be live on YouTube, it should be live on Facebook, it should be live everywhere right now. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, great stuff. So say hi to everybody, of course, as you're coming in. And I'm just uh, looking at everything coming up there. Hi, Roger. Hi, Moni. Uh, trust your day went well. Uh, yes, it did. Well, in different ways, yes, it did. Peace and power to all. Amen, Roger. Of course, people are probably surprised that we're absolutely, I try something different tonight, so we're a little bit uh, more on time, as they say, because I tried something different in the setup, and it somewhat worked. Somewhat worked. So uh, there'll be other people probably wondering, what? He's actually on. Wow. He's actually on time. Wow. Don't laugh, everybody, too, too loud. I take it you can hear me all loud and clear, all of you. Uh, let me go over to you, uh, Facebook. Great. Hi, Ross. Hi, Mercy. Chris, Elizabeth, Pascal, uh, Jenny, and anybody else who comes in. Make sure and say hi to them because we want to make sure everybody gets a warm welcome as they come in live, of course. Uh, doo -doo -doo, where is that now? Okay, I need to bring that over here. And I need to bring this over here. Okay. Uh, great stuff. So as anybody's coming in, make sure and say hi to them, of course. I just say GC Motors have just come into Facebook. It's good to see you. Pamela has just come in. Great stuff. And on YouTube. So oh, Facebook, it, the, the, the advertisement went up. So I tried something different tonight to try and get it going faster. And it, it somewhat worked. So I was able to get Facebook going faster and YouTube going a little bit faster than normal. So we're a little bit on time tonight, which is good. So some people might be shocked at that and just coming in as, as we're going along. So I'm just going to do something here because I need to be able to see, uh, I need to be able to see some stuff. And how do I make that smaller? How do I make that bigger and how do I make that smaller? Do, do, do. No picture on YouTube, okay. No picture on YouTube, what's going on there? Uh, probably the picture might be going in and out. It's probably a, a connection. That's probably uh, a streaming connection. Roger, you should be able to see me now. Don't you just told me, Roger, no picture on YouTube? Today went well, no picture on YouTube. Hi, everything, uh, evening all. Here, Emma, and uh, trying with kids. Great stuff, good to see Alish. Roger, tell me, is there a picture on YouTube now? This should be. Should be. Should be able to see me. Is there a picture? Hi, Ralph. Hello. Hello, Alish. So, is there a picture, guys? Are you able to hear me? Again, I tried something different tonight, both on YouTube and Facebook, to try and get it going faster. No picture on YouTube. I can see you on YouTube, says Jimmy. J Roger, I'm not quite sure what's happening on your end because uh, yeah, everybody else can see. So I'm not quite sure, Roger, if that's something, a connection on your end. Maybe it might need to be refreshed in some way. Uh, so sorry about that, Roger. Uh, maybe it needs to be refreshed. Obviously, you can hear me. <clears throat> so um, hopefully in the uh, looking good dude thanks Ralph for your vote of confidence there uh, great stuff so again I just want to go over to Facebook just for a second there I came on as I said tried something different tonight to try and get it going faster the setup going fast first so Facebook is good and so it's good to see you guys so I'm gonna go straight in of course some of you are surprised probably that it's actually on time tonight for once but I tried something different and it seemed to work there's a little bit of work be behind it but it seemed to have worked in getting it going and getting it going. Um, seemed to have worked in getting it going a little bit faster, getting it off the ground. So God bless you all. Good to see you tonight. Your time and your commitment is precious. And so tonight we're going to continue talking about maturity and the whole area of maturity in Christ and that it's God's will for you to grow. And you can grow and become mature. You can grow and become mature. It's God's destiny for you. You have the ability to do that in Christ. In Christ. 
and to be all that God has called you to be. Now, this is the second study of a series that we're doing on the whole area of Christian maturity or spiritual maturity. And I'm Pastor, if you're tuned in for your first time, I'm Pastor Tom Hoban of Good News Christian Church here in Ireland. And this is part of our discipleship process. It's also part of our Bible school on a C, on what's called the C level or the commitment level. And we have four courses in the whole area of the commitment level. And this is about commitment to Christ and character in the area of maturity. A commitment to Christ and his character in the area of maturity and becoming Christ-like. And that you're called to that. Every single believer is called to that. So without a further ado, let's get into the study tonight. So part two. And so if you haven't already, <clears throat> part one video is up on YouTube. And it's also on Facebook as well. A little bit harder to find out on Facebook. But they're all there on Facebook as well under our Good News Christian Church page. But also on YouTube under the Thomas Hoban channel. Unless it changes, we might change the name on that. But it'll be still there. Uh, all the videos are there. Both. Other videos that we've been doing for Sunday services and other videos and other things. So we're here to bless you, to encourage you. And that's what we want to do. But tonight we're covering section or session two, I should say, on Christian maturity. And the area that you can grow. You can actually be what God has called you to be. You can do what God has called you to do. And you can have what God has called you to have. So let's continue on with that. You can grow. Look at that lovely picture. If you're seeing double vision right now, that's because it is actually up on your screen double time but you can grow that's what you're called to do you're called to be growing growing is natural in actual fact we know that you know when something doesn't grow uh, a child or something like that not developing we, we consider it unnatural we consider something's wrong there's something inside us we know that growing is natural fathers and mothers desire their children to grow to grow up in every way and we desire to see things develop and go forward you know, children desire to grow themselves. They opportunity to grow. They, they hunger to grow. You know, even when their children and their babies are tasting, they're trying to crawl. They're, they're frustrated when they don't crawl. I'm actually a grandfather right now. Would you believe that? And um, my grandchild, Oscar, who's getting a little bit frustrated as he's trying to learn how to get from A to B in the room. Or, you know, so they want to grow and they want to explore. It's natural for uh, parents to want their children to grow unless there's something wrong with the parents and it's natural for a child to want to grow and we want to grow and even as a child grows a little bit further wants more freedom wants more growth uh, and teenagers want more freedom we want all more freedom but with freedom comes responsibility you know that's the thing so not all growth is easy when we grow we're also talking about growth in many areas we're not just talking about growing physically we're talking about growing emotionally we're talking about growing mentally and mental capacity, the ability to speak a language, the ability to communicate, uh, growing emotionally among people and socially, all those areas, and spiritual growth, to grow spiritually. Now, in one sense, spiritual growth covers all the areas of growth. You know, because really in a true sense of the word, to grow and mature spiritually is to really cover not just spiritual in the sense of separated from physical growth separated from mental and emotional growth separated from relational growth spiritual growth and spiritual maturity is an aspect of connecting to the other realm and growing in that but it's it's more it's multifaceted and spirituality is not something that is boxed in a corner it's not something we put separate that's true spiritual growth and true spiritual maturity also affects physical growth and I don't mean just healing and stuff. I mean the whole area. Your body was just designed to serve your spirit. I'm going to say that again. Your body was designed to serve your spirit. Not your spirit to serve your body. Your spirit, soul, and body being. And so even the world around you and social activity is there to help you uh, and to uh, express spiritually. And so spiritual growth is not just in the sense of some kind of ethereal thing. It's not some sense of just about going to heaven. Spiritual growth is to cover everything. Now, in the Greek mindset, we often split things up. But in the Jewish and biblical mindset, spiritual growth is, a, spiritual growth is an aspect of growing with God, growing in yourself, becoming fully human. And that's what we're called to be. But with growth, sometimes it's as difficult. You know, aspects of growth... You know, whether it's a caterpillar becoming a butterfly, whether it's a, a pea becoming a pod, whatever it is, with growth, there's often change, and we don't like change too much, but there's 
growing pains. There's the shedding off of the old to become the new. And so there's that aspect of growth, even though we desire it, even though we want it, even though our parents want it, even though God wants it, even though even for the Christian wants it, even though you inside you want to grow spiritually, that there is those aspects of growth that is painful and difficult. You know, whether it's growing from a child to learn how to cycle a bike or to read and write or learning how to share rather than saying everything's mine uh, as a child or whether it's learning to even grow socially and interact with people. All growth, including spiritual growth, which covers all of that aspect, is sometimes difficult. It's challenging. But growing gives you greater freedom and also with it greater responsibilities. But we desire to grow. It is in inside us to grow. It's part of our DNA. And so spiritual growth is that way. So with that in mind, I want to remind you of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11, talking about growing in love and talking about that's the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, Paul turns around and he says this, he says, with respect to putting away things, growing up, becoming more, even into the area of growing into our resurrected state. At one stage, even things of this world, some things, even the gift of tongues, for instance, will pass. But when I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, but when I became a man, I put childish ways or child, childhood behind me. I don't know about you, I have moments, uh, how do I say, stepping stones or milestones of growth that I remember. Of course, you can sometimes as a parent see milestones of growth in your child the first time they say a word or, you know, say something. The first time they take a few steps. The first time they kind of feed themselves. You know, these type of things, milestones, the first day at school and so forth and so on. There's these kind of milestones. But even as a, a child or growing up yourself, you might remember milestones in yourself where you decided to grow or take that next step. And, you know, it's not always easy. And I, this might sound silly, I know. Uh, but I remember when I was about um, nine years of age or about ten years of age, something like that. I'm not quite sure when exactly. But I remember when I, I was... Uh, when I was at a stage where I just made this conscious decision, when I was really young, I used to play with what I call dinkies, tie cars, you know, tie cars with wheels and driving them around. I used to build little cities outside my house, you know, with pliers and just dig out roads in the garden and play. And I, I was big into just my own world and my own little escape with, with tie dinkies, what I call them dinkies. I, I don't know what they call them, maybe in your, wherever you are, but tie little cars and I remember, you know, they had them all in a kind of a tin cans and or, um, tin boxes, you know, had them in tin boxes. And now I haven't been playing with them for a long time, but I remember when I was about, I think it was about, uh, it could be nine, ten years of age. I'm not quite sure when exactly, but around that age. And I remember getting my box of dinkies and uh, distinctively putting them away, putting them up in, into the attic. Now, nobody told me to do it. Nobody asked me to do it or anything like that. It was a kind of a decision, a distinctive decision in my own heart. For some reason, like, it's now time to put them away. And I, I remember doing that. I remember consciously knowing it was time to move on. And I didn't necessarily play with them for a while. It's just It was just one of those things. And I remember putting them up into the attic, and, and it, was a, it was a moment. It was a moment. And so likewise, even growing, there can be these moments of growth where we dance with the growing process, where we have a part to play, a part to play in the growing process. And you too have that, whether in all aspects, emotionally, spiritually, all different aspects, you have a part to play. And, and so we have that to do that. And in this course right now, this study that we're doing right now, is to try and help us to take the steps that we need to take, whether daily or whatever way, to grow into what God has called us to grow, to be what God has called us to be. And he's called us to grow. And so that's what this whole course right now, lesson one was last week, introdu introducing to the whole area of maturity, introducing to the whole area where it's connected with church as a milestone or a core value in the church, core value in Christian walk. And so we're called to grow. And so that 
also calls us to be challenging ourselves to actually take the next step and and then also to be patient also like you know the teenager wants to be wants to be 21 you know it, also knowing that there's a process in place you can't necessarily skip the processes and anytime you do skip a process of growth it always ends up with problems always and to learn to just be at the right time at the right place where you are and to grow into what you are knowing even the patience of that and struggling with the patience of that and so as we go forward with this to know that growth is natural and not to grow is not natural there's something abnormal about that and you as a believer in christ because this is what this is for those of you are believers in christ if you're tuned in on youtube right now and tuned in on facebook and you haven't come to christ to some degree some of what we're teaching about will you know won't connect with you because we're really talking about a christian who's connected with god who wants to grow spiritually and really what that means biblically and have the full understanding of what it means to mature in christ but the first thing is this is when we talk about growing or the purpose of our lives and we want to know the purpose of our lives we sometimes have a little bit of a, a childish understanding or too simplistic of an understanding here in ecclesiastes which means the philosopher and it's the book of ecclesiastes in chapter 12 verse 13 it says now now after all has been heard uh, we come to this conclusion on the matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the duty of all mankind to fear god and keep his commandments and that's good to know that god is god to have respect and honor for god your creator and to hear what he has to say and follow his words this is your duty this is your purpose in life and that's good there's nothing absolutely wrong with that but it can be a little bit simplistic we need to be a little bit more um the bible has a lot more to say than just that now of course if you get there with just simply having reverence for god and, and listening to his voice and following his voice of course that's the essence of it you know to grow is to be led by him to be led by his purposes absolutely but let's not be simplistic about it let's actually look at what the bible has to say and intelligently look at this area because many people don't like the area of maturity and growth and the challenge of that they just want to come in to you know get their ticket for heaven and that's what they think christianity is about and it's not there's more to it than that so we want to dive in a little bit into the depthness of it and so starting off we're going to look at genesis in genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28 it says this so Genesis is the book of beginning, and it's good to sometimes see the foundational truths right from the Old Testament and how they come through to all the scripture. Right from the very beginning in the book of beginning, in the chapter 1, it says this. Now God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule <coughs> over the fish in the sea and the birds in the, uh, birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Here right now, that can be unpacked but here right now we get some of the essence of your purpose in life of your calling in life the will of god for your life why you're made you were made by god to be his image and likeness you were made by god to be his image and likeness and for you to find fulfillment for you to find your place for you to find peace and to feel growth and to feel accomplished this is what you're to do you're to become and fulfill that calling in your life to be the image and likeness of god it's a high calling my goodness is that a high calling to be the image and likeness of god and when he made mankind he made god verse 27 so god created mankind in his own image in the image of god he created them so there's a whole aspect of becoming the image of God, reflecting God around you. You are the image of God in the temple we call earth. Earth 
being the temple and you being the image. In every temple, there's an image of the God of the temple, you know, and it reflects something of the God it's supposed to represent or house. And you are called to be <clears throat> the image of God to everything, all creation around. You are the object of God's temple. The earth is as such the temple of God, and not just the Garden of Eden, but the temple of God in all of creation. And uh, you're to represent him, to reflect him. That when creation looks at you, when other beings look at you, animals, whatever, creation, angels even included, they're to see something of God. They're, they're to see the image of God. That's your calling in life. So straight away, if you're to grow spiritually, if you're to become what God has called you to be, to become fully human, if you're to become fully human as God intended humanity to be, it means that you're to come fully the image and likeness of God. And straight away we see aspects here, even in that scripture, let us make man in our image or mankind in our image. The sense of to be the image of God is a sense of collectiveness, like a sense of community, a sense of togetherness. So to be that image, let us create, he create God in his image, he created them, male and female, he created them. That there's this sense of community. It's not just a uh, you on your own only. It is you on your own, but it's also the sense of social activity. That's why I said true spirituality is not just some kind of sitting in the corner going, um, you know, that's not true spirituality. Yes, you might enter the spiritual realm, but it's not true spirituality. True spirituality is connected with others. It's fully integrated in yourself, fully integrated with others. There's a spiritual aspect in the sense of the, the, the dynamic of your spirit. There's the soul aspect, your mental capital, capabilities, your emotional capabilities, the activity of your will. There's even a physical, physical aspect of it. That when God created you, he created you with these attributes to reflect something of him. And he created us to live in community. And then also he created us like in his image, spirit, soul, and body. There's also an aspect of that image bearing. There's an aspect of that spiritual growth where we're to rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. We're to increase. We're to subdue the earth just as God does. We're to bring his kingdom into the earth or creation around us as his representatives. So spiritual maturity or spiritual growth is not just one facet. There's much facets to it. And we're not going to even cover all the facets in this, um, not just this lesson tonight, but also these, these number of videos that we're going to do, a number of these lessons. We're not going to cover everything because it's a continuous growth and it's a continuous, it's a deep subject like all of it, all of the things of Scripture. We'll be learning forever as such, uh, growing in it. But let's get some of the first things first. So for you to grow spiritually, for you to have spiritual maturity, is to recognize you're called to be the image of God and in multiple facets. Now, we'll hone in on some of those facets, and particularly the whole area of character and stuff like that, because some things will pass. For instance, my hair will pass. I'll get a new resurrected body. There are some things will pass. Some of the gifts of the spirit, you know, gifts of the spirit will pass, but some things remain. And one of the things is as we get to connect to that, which is more eternal aspects of displaying God's character, or God's uh, who God is. These are the things that are eternal, and we really do need to make sure we connect with those things right now as we live onto eternity. But this whole area of dominion, the whole area of subduing the earth, uh, the relationship, all of these aspects are part of displaying the image of God. But we're called to do that, to be his image and likeness. God's purpose for you, God's will for you and mankind. Again, we see it in many aspects of scripture when we see it in Genesis 2 again, the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. That's in verse 15 of chapter 2. And then verse 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a suitable helper or a helper for him. And chapter 3, Genesis 3, verses 8 to 9. Then the man said to his wife, Here this, uh, then, then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to them, man, and said, Where are you? So here we see again in Genesis 
about the sadness of the fall, the falling away from the glory and the falling away from the calling upon mankind's life. But we see some aspects here is that to be the image of God, to fulfill the purposes of God, we're to take care of things around us because God is a himself he takes care of things he takes care of what he's created to take care of you know to work the ground for us or to take care of what god has put in our hands that's part of becoming spiritually mature to to fulfill that and also you see here that as i said uh, alluded to at the beginning god said let us make man in our image and male and female he created them and then we see that god said it's not good for man to be alone now this isn't just about female and male aspects it's about relationship that we're called to be in relationship to one another we're called to live into community we're called to live in family in the family of god so part of growing up to be spiritually mature and we have to carry that all the way through is about how we socially grow how we emotionally grow how we grow in togetherness it's not just that you can become spiritually mature somewhere on an island somewhere many have tried that whether it's a monastery or whatever Yes, there's times for solitude. Even Jesus went into times of solitude. Even Jesus brought his disciples into times of solitude as a team. But again, spiritual maturity is not that you, again, you know, go into the backside of some desert and you, you hum for the next 40 years. That's really not the biblical aspect of maturity. Spiritual maturity is not living in isolation. Times of solitude, maybe, for prayer and concentration, but not isolation. Two different things. And you know you can live in isolation even when you're living in a big city. You can live in isolation even if you're a part of a church. So part of spiritual maturity is growing in fellowship, love for God, but also love for people growing in that fellowship with God, fellowship with his church. And that's why the first part of commitment that we, if you were part of the commitment classes, the first part of commitment is commitment to uh, Christ's body, a commitment to Christ's church in membership. So if you're born of God, you're part of the family of God, but the first area of commitment to Christ is not only commitment to him, but also commitment to his body. And so that's the whole area of membership. That's, a, that's the course before this one. But now we're looking at even growing in that again. But then I want you to look at here a, a major aspect of spiritual, of course, spiritual dynamic is this area. Uh, when God came to walk in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve to converse, to have relationship, that that relationship, of course, first and foremost, is a relationship with God himself. That spiritual maturity is not just about you growing in character, not just about you in the spiritual realm, but that you have a, a deepening, growing, uh, warm, depth of relationship with God that it is a genuine relationship with the person of God that it's a genuine growth so growing in spiritual maturity has that aspect to it and so we carry that through as we look at different aspects of growing in spiritual maturity so this is the thing if we are to realize what we're about we're called to be the image of God um, you might have heard this term before, imago, imago Deo. Uh, you know, this area of the, the image of God, this is actually where a lot of Western society that we've gotten our, our sense of that every person has autonomy, every person should have a vote, every person has rights, the right to life, for instance, that a baby is not just an animal, it's a, it's a baby that has made the image of God and has the right to life. So all of this stems, these rules and these kind of laws came about because of people having an experience that the dignity of man, there's not one man greater than the other. Yes, they might function and they might have position, but ultimately every single human being carries something of the image of God. And then also uh, some, that breeds out into, as the image of God to carry responsibility for the earth. And so this theology and this understanding of Imago Deo, or the image of God, the image of God bearing, affects many different areas. So this is one of the things, is the more we think properly about God, and the more we think properly about how God has called us and created us, affects everything. If it genuinely, if we let that renew our minds into the way that God thinks, 
And so when we don't have that way of thinking, it also affects everything. It affects the laws of the land and so forth and so on. People become disconnected from their reality of God and their life in God. And hence, you can laws come and laws call, go. But if we really want to change the laws around us, just a hint, hint, we really need to get people back again to their relationship with God. Because that's where it's really at. If we want to have spiritual warfare, if we really want to be smart and strategic, it mightn't happen in an hour, it mightn't happen in a year or four years or ten years, but ultimately it's when you connect people that back with God that society is slowly but surely brought back into order. When you disconnect people back with God, disconnect people from God and the revelation of God and the revelation of who they are in God, it brings all creation into disorder. And we see it happening. And so the key is not as fast as you might like it. It's not a happy meal. It's not a, the key to spiritual warfare and spiritual strategic prophetic life is to really see what's what really has will bring about change. You cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you're born again. So let's go into that. So with that in mind, if we're created with a purpose, if we're created with a calling, we are also, the church is created to help fulfill that calling. The church, the ecclesia, the called out of God, the people who are called out of God are not just gathered just to have a good time and just gathered just to, you know, just, you know, the church has a purpose. Uh, the, why we are still on earth, <laughs> there's a purpose <clears throat> to be the image of God. And so the church is to fulfill or help fulfill that purpose. Look, I'm going to read out through the whole passage here, if you wouldn't mind. It might be a little bit small on your screen. Sorry about that. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just bring out the whole slide in full so that you can read it along with me. It says this in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up, verse 13, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful schemes. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. For in him or for him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So you can see here, the church has purpose. And I want to look at the church here in different aspects. Sorry, I went into the wrong slide there. I want to look at different aspects of the church and its purpose. If you can see here, the highlighted or the underlined, um, the underlined words here. When he gave the gifts of apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers, it was to equip God's people for works of service for them to do what they're called to do. But so that the whole body of Christ would be built up or grow or do what it's called to do and to reach that unity and faith and knowledge in the Son of God. And what's the end result? The end result is that the body of Christ each believer in it and as a body would become mature, to become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. This is what the church is about. The church isn't about building buildings. The church isn't about, you know, trying to do many things that people think it's to do, just create concerts and have a good time. The church's focus is to help people become mature. The leadership and everybody involved, the leadership is to help everybody get involved in works of service, loving service, gifting one another. And so that the whole lot of us, all of us would become more mature, both individually and together, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. What is maturity? Maturity is becoming the whole measure or the whole stature, as some of the old versions said, the whole measure, the whole standing, the whole stature of the fullness, not just half, but the fullness of the Messiah, the fullness of Christ. And then to be no longer infants or children, to be no longer infants that are just tossed about, not really know what we're doing. And, you know, every teaching here, running there, 
and deceitful schemes of some e people who are looking for, e you know, whatever lead leadership or drag people away or whatever it is, but no longer children tossed around. But as we grow and as we speak and encourage each other in truth and love to, to grow and to, to become in every respect. Look at that in verse 15. To out of love and truth to become in every respect all aspects spirit soul and body socially in every way the mature body of him meaning jesus who is the head that is christ that that is what we're called to we're called to become the mature body of him and so this is your calling this is your purpose this is the purpose of the church to help believers the ministry to believers the ministry of the believers is not just to make you feel good come on sunday and you go away on monday and just live your life the same as you did every other year or every other week, or to do your own thing, or whatever. No, the, the purpose of the church is to try and help everyone to grow. Now, of course, people will be at different levels and different stages, and everybody doesn't grow necessarily the same way because we're all different. We've all got different experiences, also got different hurts and traumas. So there's lots of different things going on. So, you know, as we grow, we're called to grow together and to become the mature body of Christ. <laughs> Forgive me, I have a family member right now crawling around in the sitting room here trying to get something. <laughs> so, they're, they're <laughs> so I'm a little bit distracted. Uh, I'll just wait for a second. Just wait for a second there. Bye-bye. <laughs> I don't know what they were saying to me, but how's ever. Sorry, a little bit distracted there. That's what happens. House church, huh? My house to your house. So here we're called to do that. We're called to become all that God has called us to be in the church. If it's not fulfilling that, can I tell you this? There's many people who are out there trying to play church. Rather right? trying to big a build, big a, build a big ministry for the egotistic of themselves. Or the, they're not even quite sure what they're doing. You know, they're, they're more concerned about church buildings. Or they're more concerned about church structure. Whether that's a house church whether that's a local community hall or whatever it is, or whether it's a building, you know, they're more concerned about peripheral things and they're not got a vision about what it is. We're called to make disciples of Jesus. Now, what does that mean? It means we're called to help everyone become like Jesus, to become the image of God, to help them to truly become the image of God. And if we're not doing that now, of course, again, different people are different levels. Different people are different ways, and we have to try and do it in different ways, using different language to try and bring everybody along. But if we're not focused on doing that, we're not really being what God has called us to be as a church. And we're not really being what God has called us to be as disciples. So we must know our purpose as believers and the ministry to believers. In fact, Paul puts it this way when he's speaking to Colossians. He says this, he is the one we proclaim, meaning Jesus, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone, not just some, but everyone fully mature in Christ. And so we have to endeavor to do that, to become that. Now you have a choice as well. Like the parents want the children to grow, but the children have to want to grow as well. That we're together as a family of God, trying to become what God has called us to be, to grow. And that everyone to present everyone not just some christians but every christian fully mature in christ that includes you and me that includes those around you who are believers that unless we're trying to help them and unless they really see that because some christians don't even see that they think they got their ticket to heaven or they think they're okay they're spiritual if they got to pray with someone and someone fell down they think that's being spiritual no we're called to help every believer become fully mature in christ to present everyone to this end i strenuously contend with all the energy christ so powerfully works in me to really work hard at doing this to do this to work hard at it to really work hard at it and work hard you know rearing children is not easy in the natural it's worth it but it's not easy but also spiritual children 
children growing up for them you know you probably remember growing up some aspects may be easy other aspects not so easy teenage years particularly as you're learning to grow up is not easy but again you and I are called to grow up and you and I are called to work at helping others to grow up and that's what we're called to do and and to not do that we're negating God's will from the days of creation to not to do it we're negating God's will as the church to not to do it we're negating actually what the cross was about we are called to minister to one another to help one another to grow up and you know I looked at it this week last week and I gave you just some aspects to help you these are just some aspects again this is not full it's just helping you to get some language around it but we're to become like Jesus we we come through the cross through the doorway of the cross we get our sins forgiven yes we get our ticket to heaven whatever way you want to put it but it's more than that we come into the family of God we come through the cross we have our freedom forgiven our sins more than forgiven we're righteous before God we're cleansed before God and now out of that state of grace in that state of righteousness before God we're called to become like Jesus we're disciples of Jesus on a journey following Jesus to become more like Jesus yes completely like him the imago Deo to become the image of God to become fully mature now there's particularly just four aspects I just put there to help us is that includes our relationship with God the Father and the Holy Spirit just as Jesus had a depth of relationship with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit we are too called to that depth of relationship just as Adam initially could walk in the cool of the day with God and be naked and unashamed and have a depth of relationship so too we're called to the depth of relationship not just a half relationship not just a bit relationship but the depth of relationship as Jesus had with the Father and the Holy Spirit we're called to have that in and through the cross of Jesus in and through the name of Jesus I mentioned it again I will mention it again and again and again and again because we need to burn that in our consciousness this is the will of God for your life this is the calling of God on your life to be completely in a depth of relationship with the Father at the level and the same depth and the same closeness and the same openness and the same interaction as Jesus himself had. No less. Fully mature calls for that. Also a depth of relationship also that is open to others. Just originally, now it's, remember this picture is not just for marriage, but just as originally Adam and Eve did not feel ashamed with one another they were naked and unashamed not only before God but also naked and unashamed before one another having a depth of relationship but it's not just a picture of marriage it's also a picture of how God wants depth of relationship uh, Jesus did not get married uh, but he had a depth of relationship and the different disciples he got to different levels with different disciples in the sense of that some of the 72 and so forth and some of the others they're all family anyone who's following God is part of the family but we see with James um, John and uh, Peter Peter James and John that there was a depth of relationship where he could reveal his glory even more and they were also open and honest with him even more there was a depth there that there can be a really depth of relationship and this is as I said goes beyond marriage goes beyond the physical world you know beyond into a depth of knowing to fully know God and let God fully know you but also as believers to be able to come into that place of brothers and sisters and family where there's a genuine uh, church community and family now you cannot do that if just you cannot do that if you're not willing to really rub shoulders with other believers you know that's why that's why the course one membership membership of a body to be the whole word membership comes from membership of a club or membership of a golf club or membership of a um, whatever it is membership of well, a sin, um, gym membership like that whole word membership comes from the Christian understanding of membership to become really that close to be knitted together different but yet working together and and sharing to get sharing vital life together having a life group together sharing life now you can't necessarily do that with everybody but you're asked you're you're called to get to a greater level of of openness and, and maturity spirit soul and body 
that takes work to grow there because there's also a need for forgiveness because other people are at different levels and they mightn't be the way that Christ would be to you and there's all of those aspects but we're called to do that and so as we grow in that in our love for God and love for people we grow in the character of God the Spirit of God of the fruit of the Spirit of love of joy of peace of patience of kindness of goodness of self-control that we grow in the character of God not just not just demanding that they grow in the character of God but you yourself to be spiritual maturity is not your how good you are at calling others to it being spiritually mature isn't it about how good you are at pointing out to other people how they need to grow and how you can command that or you know and and there is a calling of course to encourage others to grow but it's how how do you do it? how are you doing in this to be spiritually mature to be more christ-like and then there's aspects of course of growing in authority and power of the spirit but authority in the name of jesus to subdue the earth to bring creation into order so to display the character of god to everyone around you and to then bring about the kingdom of god and power so these are just four aspects that I think can help you in understanding to become mature is all of that inclusive to be spiritually mature to be Christian maturity again is not just because you can pray for five hours fair enough if you can but it's that's not necessarily meaning you're spiritually mature knowing your Bible back to front it's helpful but that doesn't necessarily mean you're spiritually mature these are the type of things that make you spiritually mature. Your relationship with God, your relationship with others, you're growing in the character of God, displaying the character of God, and growing in the authority of Jesus that Jesus has called you to, and living that out in very real terms. This is spiritual maturity into wherever we are on this earth. So the cross of Jesus is the gateway into that. And so we take the cross of Jesus as the gateway because we become members of the body we begin our work in that we begin the work of salvation Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and so what was the work of the devil remember the work of the devil was when mankind fell when mankind was tempted it brought death spiritual death rather than spiritual life that spiritual death a separation from God they felt naked and ashamed they started to split from one another and not be honest with one another they started to not be real and authentic with one another not to the level that god wanted them to have it. and then they weren't authentic and far from authentic with god running from god so the relationship with god and the relationship with one another began to break down and then it knocked on to every other facet and area of life on the earth as the image of god was being broken and so the work of the devil is to true sin and true different ways is to break the purposes and the calling of God upon your life to stop you from being mature the work of the devil is to stop you from being mature in your relationship with God and the depth of that your relationship with other people your ability to display the character of God and your ability to walk in the authority and the kingdom of God and all that means and so Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and the cross is the means by which he ultimately, through his cross, death and resurrection, it began the work of destroying the works of the devil. But that work is also continuing to destroy the works of the devil in our lives. The cross cr created the gateway, the absolute punch by which through his death and resurrection, we become righteous with God. We become begin that relationship with God. And out of that, we begin a better understanding of ourselves. Out of that, as we grow in that righteous and relationship with God and love relationship with God we begin to love others out of that we begin to display reflect back to God and reflect back to others the fruit of the Spirit out of that we begin to reign in life through the righteousness of God we begin to reign and begin to come into our place of even reigning over the evil forces and casting them out and subduing them to the will and the kingdom of God so Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to give us life. The devil came, of course, you're very familiar with these passages, but I'm trying to help you to think about them maybe in a new way, in a deep, uh, um, a new nuance, in a better way, a, a better depth to it as we continue on in this whole area of called to 
the spiritual maturity. That the a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come to give you life and life to the full. That Zoe life is inside you. Jesus has come to give you that life. And that life is to grow that life. So you have the potential to grow. You can grow. That Jesus destroyed the works of the devil and Jesus gave you new life through the cross. You have the potential to grow, to become what God has called you to become. You see, again, in 1 John chapter 3, verses 8, it says this. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, or sorry, that should be John, that should be John's gospel, not 1 John, sorry. In John's gospel, chapter, first, chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. For you to enter into that relationship with God, for you to enter into that place of genuine love relationship as God governs, as the Father governs in the family, for you to enter into that place of displaying the character of God and seeing the kingdom of God coming in its fullness and all its glory, you need to come through the cross. You need to have that death and birth experience. Because there's something bad inside you, the sin nature, the broken nature that needs to be put to death and then you're born again. Now, as you're born again, you have the potential to be what God has called you to be. Unless you're born again, you cannot enter back into that place where God, even though he desires for you, you cannot become the maturity, the spiritual mature person that you are called to be. You cannot become the image of God, the imago Deo. As we looked at already but if you are born again you have the potential to see how God's kingdom works and see what aspects and you have the potential to enter in and fully engage fully participate fully become a fully member of the family of God the kingdom of God the royalty of God the royal family and all that that means Growing in depth of relationship with the Father and growing also in relationship with one another and also the kingdom of God and all that it means. But you need to be born again. And that's what the cross of Jesus is about. The cross of Jesus is not the end of, of it. And you take a hold of the cross of Jesus and I got my ticket to heaven and that's it. I go my merry way. I might go to church. I might not go to church. I might do it. I might. That is such a, a shallow level of Christian living. It's still a flesh-centered Christian level. It's a carnal Christian life where Jesus is not truly developing inside you to the place where it was. And when we live at that low level of Christianity, there's a danger, first of all, you know, some people who call themselves Christians are not necessarily Christian. There's a danger, of course, uh, of not only a child, if it doesn't grow properly, it's somewhat deformed as such. A, and so likewise, we, we want growth, spiritual growth to happen. And there's a whole lot of dangers there. And, and it's un, unnatural. It's unnatural for immature Christians. For people to be 10 years in Christ and still not committed about even to grow in character in many aspects, it's, it's, it's sad and unnatural. And sadly, there's a lot of Christian life Christian, whatever you want to call it, church life, or that is so sad. And, and it's so sad because sometimes Christians don't want to grow because they don't want the challenge of it. And sometimes it's so sad because there's not parents, fathers and mothers, or pastors and leaders, or brothers and sisters who are encouraging and spending the time to grow. And they themselves are not growing because they're not showing what it means to be a parent. There's a lot of what I would call orphaned Christians. And uh, sadly, then it's hard work trying to, it's hard work then trying to bring someone who is birthed it wrong, someone who's not discipled, who hasn't been discipled. It's, it's hard work trying to disciple them then because there's a part of them want to kick against it and so forth and so on. You know, and, and particularly teenage Christians, you know, they hate you for it. They hate you for it because you're trying to bring in parenting to them to help them to help them to be all that they can be and so that's a sad thing but you have the potential 
you have the potential to be mature and to grow. You're called to grow. And once you're born again, you have the potential to be all that God has called you to be, to do all that God has called you to do. In Romans, it says this. It says, the spirit who you receive does not make you a slave. You're not in a place of condemnation. Remember Romans 8, 1. You're not in a condemnation. You're not a slave. You're not. You're part of the family. You're not in a slave. Does not the spirit you receive does not make you a slave, so that you live in fear again or feel naked and afraid. No, but you're in a close relationship, with God. Rather, the spirit you receive brought you into adoption of children of sonship, and by Him we cry, Abba, Father. In the name of Jesus, we're in the family of God, Abba, Father. And the Spirit testifies with our spirits that we are God's children. Now, <clears throat> there's a sense that we're God's children by view of creation, of course. But there's a difference about our inner nature. That we are now, as we believe in Jesus, we've been given right, as it says in John's Gospel, chapter 1, right to become children of God. That we're born again, that we're born from above. That there's something happened, a dynamic happened. That we're children of God, we call it Abba. Abba, Father, as children of God. Now, as children... The natural thing to do is to become like your parents as such, to grow into your father. And so as we call out to Abba Father, there's a part where we seek his kingdom, his will, to become his image. It is the natural thing for you. And you have the potential to be what God has called you to be. In actual fact, it says this, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Be perfect. Jesus says, as your heavenly father is perfect, how he treats the, the creation, how he treats people, how he's merciful, how he makes the rain come upon the wicked and the righteous, how he gives food to the wicked and the righteous. In other words, that part of God that is good and kind. And, and this word perfect here, I, I want you to understand is not just about moral perfection. It's about maturity. This word perfect is, is about maturity. It's about growing up to become like the father. Not just moral perfection. There's that aspect to it, of course, character. But it's not about you living in perfection. It's about growing into all that God has called you to be and, and to be compassionate like God. Yes, there's that aspect. And, you know, some of the Bible verses are different ways that you look at the Greek word as mature, complete, to reach final form. And that you're called to grow into that. You're called to become like the Father. You're called to become the image of God in the earth. And God has called you to do that, to become like Jesus, to become like the Father. Again, in Scripture, look what it says. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Now, follow God's example. In chapter 5 of, of Ephesians, after he gives the theology, he moves into the practical stuff, and he's challenging the believers in Ephesus. That after you grasp the height and depth of what God has done for you, that you're saved by grace and, and not by works, as you grasp a hold of the mercy of God, and you grasp a hold that you're seated now in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and so forth and so on. Then he says, follow God's example. In some of the versions, actually, I, I rather the way some of the versions put it, and I think the old NIV, NIV used to put it this way as well. Therefore, be imitators of God. In other words, reflect God. Be imitators. This is the calling on your life. This is the calling. This is spiritual maturity. This is being spiritually strong, spiritually mature. Be imitators of God. Or even then in the aspect, just as Christ. Be imitators of God or just be imitators of Jesus. The way Jesus is the reflection of God the Father. That Jesus in his full humanity reflected God the Father and his love for people. His love for God and his love for people. And how he sacrificed himself for us. He became a fragrant offering that we are to reflect God. We're to become like God. We're to be images of God. But just as Jesus was the image of God, so we too in Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus, just as Christ did, we are too to be able to lay down our lives in obedience to God. We're called to let the Spirit of Christ in us become imitators of God, as children of God. Jesus said, I'm the, I'm the Son of God. I'm the Son of God. And so we're to have that mindset. This is our destiny. This is who we are. If you think you're a chicken, you'll only flap a little bit. If you realize that you're an eagle, then you'll be able to glide. You need to realize who you are, not just in the sense of authority to deal with demons and sickness and stuff like that, 
oh, I know Christians go into that area and we need to be strong in that area. But, but the maturity that we're called to be is to reflect God, to be actually reflect God in all aspects, spirit, soul, and body. And to include that is to be imitators of Jesus in the way we lay down our lives out of love. And that's not easy. But that's what we're called to be. We're called to really mature, to grow emotionally and spiritually. You see, when we're called to be a disciple of Jesus, to follow Jesus, that calling to be a disciple, to follow him and become like him. You see, a disciple is called to become like the master in every way. Not just one way, not just with preaching, not just with being having the authority to heal the sick, not just with whatever you can call it, but to become like him in every way. Just as Jesus had a relationship with the Father, to become like him. Just as Jesus had a sense of who he was, to become like him. Just as Jesus had a good sense of how to love the brothers and sisters, to become like him. Just as Jesus loved his enemies, to become like him. Just as Jesus came from heaven to earth on mission to lay down his life as a servant and not as a Lord, to become like him be imitators of him to have the same mindset of him this this is true spiritual life and he, Jesus hasn't called you Jesus hasn't called you to something you cannot do you can do this now in Christ if you've grasped the hold of the work of Jesus in your life and to grasp a hold again and again and again of the depth of the forgiveness, of the depth of the righteousness, the depth of the work of the cross of Jesus, the death and resurrection. If you truly grasp that your old life is dead and that your new life is in Christ, that you've been crucified with Christ and you no longer live, it is Christ who lives in you. If you truly grasp the born again experience and live in the good of it, if you truly grasp that when you were buried in Christ or buried with him in baptism, that you died and you rose to newness of life, if you truly grasp that, you realize that Jesus hasn't called you to something you cannot do. He's called you to something you can do. If you do it his way. If you learn to walk by his spirit. If you learn to walk in his footsteps after him. You can be what God has called you to be. And you can do what God has called you to do. He doesn't call you to something you cannot do. He doesn't call you to something you cannot be. It is natural. If you yield to the natural processes, if you yield to the natural process, if you yield to and dance with the Spirit, it will be natural for you to become more Christ-like in all aspects of spiritual maturity, not unnatural. And that's why there's actually a lot of unnaturalness in the church, because a lot of other believers, as I said, are not really following and they're not really dancing with God. They're not really growing in their relationship with God the way they should. They're not really listening and they're trying to do it by their own flesh. They're going back into works. They're, they're trying, you know, just do their own thing. And they're not really growing. And, and then there's a lot of leaders, sadly, who are sometimes, and it, it, believers sometimes won't come to church and won't do it unless they, the leaders give in to their childish ways. And so there's a lot of leaders actually, for the want of a better word, they've been, um, what's the word I would use? They've been somewhat um, pushed into. They've been they've been pushed into a place of not leading the way they should lead because people say, "Well, I won't I won't follow you because you know I won't get involved. I won't really commit because you're you're not really giving what I want." And they're still so selfish. And sadly, some leaders have given into that. They've become tired, and they need to grow up. And they need to continue on their maturity. And part of their maturity is to is to love and to be patient and to also discipline and also if a teenager wants to walk away or an older a child wants to run away to, to some degree sometimes you've got to leave them go and so there's all, all the aspects amen if you've just tuned in right now whether you're on facebook or youtube and you've gotten something out of this already if this is challenged to you and good for you and uh, you know you, you see what we're trying to do here we're not trying to bring you and uh, necessarily sweet stuff we're trying to bring you true stuff and, and to speak the truth in love and we're this channel is about the disciple we want to disciple you we want to help you whether you're part of good news or part of foursquare ireland or 
or part of anywhere in the world. We want to help you to be all that you can be. And so if you're getting some value out of this, and we're going to continue to do more videos, will you hit like there or even consider subscribing there on YouTube or follow on Facebook or hit the like button again on Facebook as well. Just hit like there. It really makes, or even leave a comment, you know, and just be blessed. It really helps to do that, you know. If there's 20 of you watching YouTube and you got some value out of this, make sure there's 20 likes on the YouTube video and it'll just bless others because it helps others then to see it as well if you're getting value out of this. And hit the notification bell if you want to continue to make sure on YouTube to get videos uh, on time. So as we're called to do it, we're called with the potential to grow. You have the potential. And just like seed, it has the potential to grow. So likewise, you were born again by the preaching of the word. Look what it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word. So when somebody's preaching the gospel, there's, there's a dynamic that happens. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. There's a dynamic that happens through the, the spoken word. And there's something of the spirit of God that when your mind receives the word and there's something of the spirit of God, if you engage with that seed, you engage with that word, the spirit of God can come into your life. And like a seed for the want of a better word of the seed of consummation, that some people, while they're hearing the gospel, while they're hearing the good news about Jesus, they become born again then and there. You think of when Peter was preaching uh, to the household of Cornelius, the people got born again and even filled with the Holy Spirit as he was preaching. And that dynamic, and to some degree, helped Peter then to realize the greatness and the depth and the width of the grace of God and the power of the gospel and to bring salvation to all. And so when you hear the preaching of the word, uh, Sometimes people get born again. They don't even know. They just know something has happened. Something where they've accepted Jesus as their Savior. They've accepted Jesus has died and rose again. And they've accepted the goodness of God. And they become born again. There's a, a dynamic that happens in their spirit. They're born again. By the living and enduring word of God. For you have been born again that way. And that's how people get born again. To receive it. Now, the thing about the seed of the word of God, when you're born again, when you're a child of God, it's natural for you to grow. And so likewise, when you're born again and you receive that seed that's not perishable, but that enduring seed, when you receive that seed and if it's if it's left inside, would you dance with that seed? Even though you might feel a bit of dirt, even though you don't feel too good, even though you don't feel as if you've got anything to give. But if you let that seed germinate and work inside you, the born again experience, it will grow. It will grow. It will naturally grow as you dance with, as you work with the Holy Spirit, as you work with the things of God. And you will produce, you will produce as you work with the way God works. You don't have to, you don't, it's not an overstrain. Now there's a dance with God, but it's not an overstrain. The biggest strain is for you when growth happens is for you to accept it and to pop through uh, different aspects and to let go of different aspects that are old way of thinking or old aspects that are not of God, flesh aspects. But it is the natural thing for you to grow. In fact, the potential for you to grow is of a depth of a nature that some people don't even realize. Again, talking about the word of God, but looking at some of its depth, look what it says here in 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 starting in verse 3 it says this he's divine power god's divine power that is god's divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life god's divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness so God's goodness, God's divine power, he has called you and through Jesus he's called you and he has given you everything you need for a godly life. You have that potential. You have that potential to be what God has called you to be. To believe the word of God. Believe what this promise of God. Believe the truth of this. Don't doubt it. But you have that potential to be fully displaying the glory of God as the temple of God. To display all that God, you have the potential to live a godly life. The power to do that. Now, you might not understand how that works, but grow. Learn to listen to the word of God. Learn how to apply this to your life. But one of the things I'm trying to hammer in 
uh, there's one nail I want to hammer in tonight is that you are called to maturity and you can become what God has called you to become. You are called to become the image of God and you can become it. One of the major reasons why you can become it is because Jesus so destroyed the works of the devil. He so done a plan of redemption. It's such a perfect plan of redemption that he's brought you into a born again experience. He's brought you into an experience where the seed of the work of God is in your life. You're a child of God. In fact, the scripture even in Peter says this. Look what it says in the next verse. It says that through these he has given us his very great and precious promises. That's verse 4. Through the word of God, he's given us his very great and precious and powerful promises to live that godly life so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by the evil desires. That you have the divine nature. Now, through Christ Jesus' death and resurrection, through the born-again experience, that you've been brought back to a place where you share in, you can participate in, the divine nature. You're completely different. You're not the same anymore. You're not just forgiven. Thank God for that. You're not just made righteous. Thank God for that. You're not just accounted to as if as if you're in the name of Jesus, as if you, all his credit has come to you. Thank God for that. But you now share in a new nature. You're now born again. You've now got the work of God inside you to will and to act. The Spirit of God inside you. You've got Christ inside you, the hope of glory. You now participate in the divine nature. You're not the same anymore. It is a genuine work that happened on the deep of your being by which you have a sharing in the divine nature. Let that sink in. Let the potential of that, let the truth of that free you and the challenge of it. But let the potential of that free you into all that God has called you to be, to become like him, to become like your father. That you're sharing in Jesus to become like the Father in the name of Jesus. You see, when we read the scripture, often people talk about it and share it in ways that again is not the fullness of what, what is really there. And there's more to it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, anyone who is in Jesus, anyone who's born again, anyone who's in his death and in his resurrection, anyone who's in the Messiah as he's Savior, anyone who's in the name of Jesus, anyone who's born again is a new creation. Our new creation has come. The new creation has begun a whole new work from, from the inner to the outer. And the old is gone, the new has come. As I like the older versions, what sometimes says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Some versions say a new creature. Some other versions say a new being. Some other versions say a new person. I've even come across a person where it says new species of being. You're totally different. You share in the divine nature. So inside you is that potential to grow. Inside you, you have greater potential than you know. But when you don't know who you are, when you don't know what you have, to some degree you won't live up to it. And the more you know what you have, of course, there's that potential and that, that aspect of growing and the goal and to know what you're called to. So you have the potential. The end goal is there. Romans 8 verse 28. In the big plan of God. In the big plan of things. God's overarching plan. For those God foreknew. In time beyond time. He foreknew what could happen. And what would happen. Those he foreknew he also predestined. To what? What's the end goal? The end goal is Imago Deo. To be conformed to the image of God, to be conformed to the image of his son, that we might be the firstborn, or that he might be, I should say, that Jesus might be the firstborn as a fully human being, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, that we're like him to such a degree that we're like him as he is our brother and sister, that it is God's will for your life to be conformed to the image, to conform 
that not conform to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, to conform, to become totally like Jesus, to bear the image of the Father. And I just want to hammer that nail in because I want to help you to have faith in the possibility, to have faith, to be sure of, to be certain of, to have hope in the calling towards you, that you're called forward to become like Jesus in every aspect, spirit, soul, and body, social, every aspect, emotional, every aspect. You're to become like God. Jesus is the display for us of what it means to become fully human. And more so to some degree. To be fully human. One who's fully in relationship with God. Fully in relationship with the Holy Spirit. Fully in love of God. Love of people. Fully walking in the depth of knowing who he is. The character. Walking out in love with his enemies. Everything. Fully walking in the power and the authority of of a human being in the kingdom of God. Jesus is the display. And we're called to become fully conformed in Christ. And we can. You can. You can become what God has called you to become. You can do what God has called you to do. And God has called you to be his image. God has called you to be mature. God has called you to go forward. This isn't for just some who've got it all together. This isn't for some who seem to just have a, I don't know, a looky dip or something. They just seem to put it together. No, this is all of us. No matter who you are, male or female, young or old, Greek or Jew, barbarian or whatever. It, it doesn't matter whether you were born on the right side, the wrong side, or any side of the tracks. It doesn't matter whether you have had heartache or not heartache, whatever it is, whoever you are, you are still, it's God's calling upon your life, God's destiny upon your life, and he has called you, and he can put things in place, and has put things in place already for you to dance with, for you to work with, by his spirit, first of all, coming to the cross of Jesus, through his death and resurrection, coming through that, understanding the born again experience, understanding that you're forgiven, understanding your righteousness, understanding that coming through that, and knowing that through that death and resurrection experience, that as a born-again child of God, as a child of God who's come through that, the seed of the Word of God, as one who participates in the divine nature, as one who's a disciple of Jesus to become like the Master, it's God's destiny from the beginning of time, before time. In His foreknowledge, in His predestination, He knew and He called you to be conformed to the image of His Son. And it is your destiny. This is the will of God for your life. Can I have an amen? This is also the memory scripture I want you to memorize. To help you to anchor these teachings. Some people ask me, how can I actually uh, preach without notes so much? And how can I do that? Well, first of all, sometimes I use pints with slides as well. But one of the major reasons for that is I take a key scripture and I actually hold that key scripture and it unlocks so much teaching potential. And I want to help you as part of discipleship, part of becoming like Jesus. Remember Jesus himself, again, to become like him. Jesus himself, as our example, as our master, knew the scripture. He could quote the scripture. It's how he dealt with the devil. It's how he dealt with often with uh, not only teaching and preaching others, but how he dealt with inner battles, how he grew himself as a human being. And so this aspect, and we will get into it near the end of this uh, course, this aspect of memorizing of scripture is one of the disciplines of helping you to grow. So I want to encourage you to get this now into your, into your lifestyle, to memorize off scripture, to let the seed actually find a home in you so it can grow in you. So take this verse of scripture, this very verse of scripture, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. For God foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that we might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Now, if you want to use a different version of the Bible, that's okay. This is the NIV 2011 edition. If you want to use the ESV or one of the other versions, fair enough. But don't try and use a, a totally free translation. Use something like the NIV, the ESV, the New King James, maybe. Use some, some version like that, some version that is a little bit more geared towards Bible study. And memorize it off and meditate on it and let it anchor, be a key anchor or a key scripture, memory key to op unlock many, much of the teaching. Because you will forget a lot of the teaching, but if you, if you remember some key scriptures, it will help you to always remember the Holy Spirit brings it back to you. So I want to encourage you, if you've been blessed, again, hit like. 
you know smash like there hit follow hit subscribe on youtube and just be blessed i want to go into youtube there if you have any questions right now just raise them up i want to i want to see i won't necessarily answer your questions but i would just want to necessarily um kind of see what questions might be raised up so again if people are there hi ross again if you're on youtube or if you're on facebook right now put in your name write something because i need to know whether you've actually watched the whole video uh, the reason being is again some people come in and they watch some of the video but they're not really doing the course so again you don't know if they've actually done the the full the full thing so please just write something in your name because i want to see it in there then i know that you've watched the whole video i know that you've been watching from beginning to end and again will you i, I want to i should have done it at the start i want to tell you that if you come in uh, into the video and if you want to be recognized as someone who's done this course as part of good news or done this course as part of dlt or kerygma is the minute you come in say hi or say something and take it your word that you're listening and that you're engaging and then before you leave say something as well then i know that you've watched you know from beginning to end again if you're watching this as a youtube video or if you're watching this on facebook after the fact again you know when you come in and remember for the next videos as well when you come in say hi you can say hi in the comments section in youtube uh you know say something you know from the course whatever let me know that's the beginning and then at the end say something as well so then i know that you've watched the whole course in the video because we want to make sure and to know that and i'm taking note of those those in good news those who may be in foursquare ireland those who want to know that you've done it so that when we open up for other things or open up for other areas where you're to teach or to use these videos to teach others that I then know that you've gone through it and I can trust you with that and I know of course it doesn't mean necessarily you mature but it at least it helps me to know that you're trying and that you're engaging with the material amen so it's good to see you Elizabeth good to see you Ross good to see you Chris who else is in there I think that's uh, Kevin was in there for a bit I don't know if you're still in there Kevin if you are, say, Pascal, if you're still in there, say hi. Jamie, if you're still in there, say hi. So that I know that you finished it. Pamela, again, say hi if you're still in there. And same again with JC Motors. And Mercy, again, also say hi at the end if you're in there still. Uh, so that laborsome, but I want to encourage one another in this. Uh, let me look at you, uh, YouTube. Again, Dan, amen. Good to say, Roger, amen. Kemi, good to see Okay, Ralph, if you're still in there, make sure and say hi. If I didn't see your name, come up there. Oh, Pamela, you went over to uh, YouTube, I see. Uh, I think, yeah, good stuff. Helen, again, uh, look at the timestamp. Yes, pick on YouTube. I'm not quite sure what that is. No, oh, pick is on YouTube. Okay, so again, Alicia, if you're still in there, make sure and say hi. Different people, if you're still in YouTube, say hi. So I know that you've actually covered the thing and that you've not just came in, looked at it, and then went away, you know. Uh, that you've actually gone through it. Uh, Alex Grover, what's this? What is more harmful than any vice? The pity that action feels the downgrading and the weak Christianity. Okay, the pity that action feels for the downgraded and the weak Christianity. What is more harmful than any vice? I'm not quite sure what you're getting at there, Alex. You could bring it a little bit more there. I'm not quite sure what you're getting at, so I don't know whether to say amen or not amen to what you're saying. Uh, the pity that action feels downgraded and weak, the weak Christianity. The pity that action feels. Not, um, if you can ex put that in different words, Alex, for me, it'd be good. I'm not exactly quite sure what you're saying there. Okay. Good stuff. Well, God bless you guys. God bless you, money. God bless you. So those of you who are still here, I don't know who's still here, who's not. But God bless you. So next week we'll be kicking off again. It's now nine o'clock. And next week we'll be kicking off at 7.30 again. And we'll be going on to the next section. So be blessed and be a blessing. God bless every one of you. And uh, I hope to see you next week again encourage others maybe to come along and join in with what we're doing and be blessed and be a blessing. God bless you.